Well, I've already done a Toy Story pasta back in December, and I know about the abandoned by Disney and Room Zero creepypastas too, but for now, how about I talk about a Disney movie from 1987 that was never completed and is so odd in its premise that it makes you wonder if you're watching a slideshow or something. The story is pretty interesting because it's disturbing about how a lost movie that is basically a slideshow can end with it being so disturbing. One thing that I felt was interesting was the fact that the unfinished Disney movies seem to be nothing more than random images or shots of fields and stuff like that. It's kind of like that CDI game that showcased flowers and whatnot. At the end, I was questioning what effect could have taken place after viewing the movie. Apparently you grow older and look more like the ice came from Adventure Time. Also, the protagonist's wife disappears at the end of the pasta with no explanation, leaving you to wonder what has happened to her. But let's face it, Disney's always been full of dark and bizarre secrets. I mean, for crying out loud, I hear that Walt Disney is actually still frozen at Disneyland. Um, I think. When you were little, what movies did you watch often? Anything Disney related, like Toy Story or The Lion King? Did your parents get you older Disney films, such as Snow White or Cinderella? Did you enjoy them? Are you an avid Disney fan by any chance? If so, then what if I told you that there is a Disney film which has never been released, never been spoken of, and nearly dropped out of existence? First, let me give you some backstory. My name is Tom Evans. I was taking a trip to Disney World with my wife, Ashley, because we were huge fans of anything Disney, and we needed to get away from our busy lives. We have very taxing jobs. We went to the Cinderella Castle of the Magic Kingdom, and as I was admiring the craftsmanship of the Marvelous Castle, this very, very elderly lady walks up to me. She appeared to be very unkempt, with ragged gray hair, a flabbed and wrinkled face, a summer crooked nose, dented, cracked, pissed yellow teeth, and a lazy eye. I noticed that she was wearing a park employee uniform and had her own name tag, so I gave her the benefit of the doubt. I noticed that her name was Ashley. Hey, you have the same first name as my wife. Castle. I was a little awestruck. This lady must have been going senile. She was pointing to the castle, and when she said that, so at the time, I thought she was asking if I'd like to go inside. It struck me as odd that she would ask me that. I thought that just Ama couldn't actually go inside even if they wanted to. But thinking it would be fun, I said yes. Once I was inside, it felt like I was in the most regal place in the world. I was in the castle's bedroom, and as I was admiring the bed, I saw something that looked out of place. There was a wooden desk next to the bed, and under the leg there was a tiny scrap of paper. I picked it up. It read 837. I stuck it in my pocket, and then I noticed that Ashley wasn't around. I tried calling her phone, and I received no answer. I then received a text from her saying that she went home early because she was feeling sick. She didn't seem the slightest bit ill when I last saw her, but I believed her. Anyway, I went to my hotel room and I invested the paper as much as I possibly could. I used a microscope on the back and I actually found something. There was a name. Kilos. 837 Kilos. I immediately googled the term and the next thing I knew, my internet went down. I reset the router, unplugged and plugged it back in, restarted my computer, all that jazz. I guess I wasn't going to have internet service for a while. As I was brainstorming ways to get my connection up and running, I noticed something on the desktop. A lone photo, titled 837 Kilos, was seen in the bottom right corner of the screen. I cautiously opened the folder, expecting something like a screamer to jump out at me or a BSLD. But no, the folder opened like any other one would. In it was three files, poster.jpg, 837.txt, and kiloswhip.mpeg. I opened 837.txt first, hoping for some sort of explanation. 837 is RD, do not distribute. Well, that certainly helped me get a better understanding of things. Not. Next, I opened up poster JPEG. It must have been a film's promotional poster. Was Kills intended to be a Disney movie but never got realized? The poster itself had a relatively dark feel, not what I expect from a lighthearted family company. I became very, really interested now. Kiloswip.mpeg was the last file I needed to check out. The runtime was 17 minutes. Right then it hit me what the whip in the file name stood for. Work in progress. If this was truly an unreleased movie, it must have been cancelled early on. My gut had a feeling that it was for very good reasons. 
I opened it in VLC and was nearly on the edge of my seat. Half of me was excited, for I was getting to see something that Disney had kept hidden for so long, and that nobody had any idea of its existence. Half of me was anxious though, because I didn't know what this film was going to be about, and I kept thinking of the old lady. She must have had something to do with this, but I would never find that out. The film is shown in its work print form, judging from the even worse than VHS quality, the timestamp in the top left corner, the date below it, and property of the Walt Disney Company did not distribute on the bottom of the screen. Um, other than those texts, there were only blackness and VHS-like audio fuzz for the first minute. About 2 minutes and 4 seconds in, the one kilos was slowly fading into view. It was colored a dry red. It stayed there for about 15 seconds, and then disappeared like a flash. Quite the opening tile. After about 20 seconds of blackness, a picture of a lush green field fades in. Now this seems more like something Disney would do, except there's still that green fuzz noise, and it's a natural photograph. It cuts to a picture of a field of flowers with a night sky with missing stars. I expected this to be an animated film, not a compilation of photographs. The next photo is a bowl of fruit. Part of me now thought that it was some kind of joke. Still, I sat patiently. After all, I still had about 8 minutes to go. The next 3 minutes were just pictures, mostly of flowers and trees. But as time went on, they got increasingly off-putting. A picture of an empty street came up, and after that, a picture of a completely empty house. The next picture was of a graveyard with neat rows of gravestones, trees, a boy of leaves, and a lone man in the distance staying over a grave. I, I couldn't make out any detail of it, and he appeared to be colored all black as if he was so wet. The slideshow stopped there, but the time was about 8 minutes in, the picture zoomed in at a snail's pace. It moved so slow that you can only notice it was zooming if you put your face up against the monitor. This went on until there was only like 1 minute of video left. It zoomed in far enough to the point where you can see the figure up close, but it no longer looked like a shadow, but rather a human being. A human being who seemed familiar. Very familiar. From what I could see, the human was being an old lady who had long, unkept, stringy hair and a crooked nose. On the very last frame, it cut to a picture on front of the gravestone. Ashley Evans was engraved on the nameplate. The monitor went completely black. I could see my face, and my nose was a little longer than I remembered, and my hair was longer than somewhat stringy. I haven't seen my wife since. I tried filing a missing persons report, but they kept denying me for some reason. I need to head off for now. My teeth are in a lot of pain.